Hey, Facebook Live, what's happening? Chuck Nice here, uh, doing a little Star Talk All Stars with two of our All Stars, uh, our main All Star, which is Carolyn Porco, Dr. Carolyn Porco. And sitting next to me is Sean Lennon. The assistant All Star. The assistant All Star, <laughs> who, um, if, if you are interested, and I know that you are, uh, this Thursday, September 15th, at the Beacon Theater, you guys will be doing Star Talk Live. Doors open at seven. Doors open at seven. Doors at seven. <laughs> Doors at seven. Make sure you, <laughs> which is very cool. And um, and Star Talk Live, of course, is when we have a live broad. Well, we tape a live show where we do what we normally do on Star Talk, which is talk science, right? Yeah, actually, I've never been to one. I've never seen one. So, um, I mean, like, how wild does it get? That's great, yeah. Uh, all I can tell you is uh, pants are optional. So just keep that in mind. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I, I refuse to wear pants. So. <laughs> exactly, which is why we have this desk here. Hey, so we're, uh, we're Facebook Live right now, which means that hopefully we have some people out there who are watching us, and uh, they're going to give us some... Uh, some queries, just okay. like we would if we were doing Star Talk. Okay, I'm bracing myself. And I actually have the first one in my hand. It's from Alan Tier. Hey, Alan, what's happening, buddy? Um, and he says this, uh, Sean, has music been an important focus for the psychological research in, oh, well, it's not just Sean, but has music been an important focus for the psychological research in NASA for their astronaut program? For instance, do they try to encourage certain uh, genres to promote positive feelings or leave it up to the personal taste? It's all gangster rap. It's only gangster rap. <laughs> It's all easy E yeah. and too loud. Well, that'd put you in a good mood, wouldn't it? Like waking up on Mars and hearing gangster rap. Do you know uh, anything I, about that? Is there a musical, psychological uh, component to preparing to go to other planets? I unfortunately don't know those kinds of details about how they're preparing humans for long duration flights. But I do know, as you remember, on the shuttle, they woke up the astronauts every morning with some song. Yeah, and on the on the IS uh, International Space Station, that guy did uh, Ziggy Stardust, was it? That's that's what I mean. The or, ISS, they wake them up. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, he actually Chris did a Hadfield. video for the, no, no, the David did, Bowie song. He did. I mean, uh, is there life on Mars? Was that the one he did, or did he? No, he, he did. Do, Ground control, Ground control to major time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Space Odyssey. Did a Space Odyssey. Great, yeah, of course. great version of it. In fact, so great that David Bowie said it was the most poignant version he'd ever heard. He was being kind. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> it, it was, was actually great. great. All right, let's take another. Uh, let's take another uh, question. Fahad uh, Ashk. I'm, I don't know your last name, Fahad, but uh, <laughs> you know your last name, all right? Uh, why is our solar system so flat and everything mm. is on one orbital plane? Oh, and this, no, and that's, please, that's a good question please, for you. Please, Carolyn, tell me the same thing about Saturn's rings. It's the same deal. It has to do with, I'm sorry, I'm going to get nerdy on you, but it has to do with the loss of energy and the conservation of angular momentum. Nice. Okay, nice. <laughs> Do so I pass? How, how much of a micro solar system is Saturn in terms of the way planets and, you know, planetoids form? Well, put aside the rings, which we think are kind of an aborted, um, well, we think they are moons that had gotten smashed up and they're so close to Saturn where the gravity gradient is so great they can't coalesce again. So they're in equilibrium. They're not going to turn into planets eventually, or little moons eventually. No, they will probably disappear, but they're not going to turn into little moons. But the rest of the moons, they're all, uh, well, the ones within about 10 million kilometers, they're all rotate, uh, revolving around Saturn in the same direction. Mm. And um, they came from a cloud of material in the same way that the solar system formed from a cloud of dust and gas and so on, it had some innate original rotation. Mm -hmm. And so it had a preferred vector in space, a rotational axis in space. And in that circumstance, when you have material that collides and loses energy, but it retains the angular momentum along that axis, it ends up, what happens is it all collapses down into a plane. And so it's then a why natural is Venus outcome. rotating in the other direction? Why, uh, is, it, why is it clockwise well, versus it could the rest have got, of the solar system, which is Probably got hit by an impact. Right. Uranus is also on its side. If you have, remember, this happens at a time when uh, it's uh, late in the solar system's early, the late part of the early, early formation. System, right. right. So it's, the, it's the end of the beginning. <laughs> it's the end of the, <laughs> the beginning. End of the beginning. <laughs> and you still have large impactors coming and hitting things, and they can alter the angle momentum. But because of this loss of energy uh, and um, 
con conservation of angular momentum, there are basically two shapes in the universe. There are spheres and there are disks, cool. and one can evolve into the other. Nice. Scientists like doing that, like reducing it to really simple things. So, so nebulas, two galaxies, mm. only have a few geometries that they can take, right? There's like a... Well, they're a little bit more messy because... Spiral galaxy, and then what else? Spiral galaxies are all disk galaxies, so right. they... they um, they take this form. They flatten out. But, you know, other galaxies are, can, they can be the result of the merger of... Right, galaxies colliding. More. Which we're on our way to meet Andromeda. Andromeda. Yes. Yeah. We have a date with Andromeda. Not, none of us are going to Galaxies colliding, date, Jerry. None galaxies of, colliding. None of us will make but, that But it's date. fun to think about, like, Andromeda being so much bigger in the sky, right? Do you know if we had eyes that were far more sensitive than we do, and we could actually, you know, store up the the energy that that Photons, collects right. yeah uh, like a cat I don't know if a cat can do that yeah. but I do know or that the Andromeda galaxy would be twelve moons across wow that's how big it would be, you, big it would what be? is that thing they Gorgeous. call the great attractor thanks Sean uh, uh, I was hoping besides, you would bring yeah, that besides up. your man breasts <laughs> <laughs> besides my what no, his no we're breasts. talking about that. you don't have them okay where's the there, there you go. That was the inappropriate bell. No, because isn't, isn't, there, isn't there an unknown uh, uh, attraction towards a certain area of the universe that doesn't have to do with the direction that we should normally be moving in? Actually, I don't know anything about this topic. They call it the great attractor, and all the galaxies in our neighborhood are moving in that direction. But are we, you sure? Maybe it's just we're... part of the, lo the, the group, the local group. I was that... asking you, yeah. Oh! So thank you very oh, yes. much. It's the great attractor. attractor. It could just be James Brown up there somewhere. <laughs> exactly. James Brown. No, that's where galaxies. Elvis went. That's hey, where Elvis, Elvis went, the great, the great attractor. All right, hey, Crystal Cantu wants to know this. Mm. I would like to know more about Osiris Rex. Uh, I know asteroids mm. are an issue, but what is the likelihood of any potential disaster would be officially disclosed. I don't know exactly what Crystal means there, but uh, Osiris the Rex, she asked about Osiris Rex, I, I thought It's was a great. mission that's going to go and pick up a sample from an asteroid and come back with it. Right. So it's going to be a sample return mission. Sample return mission. Maybe she's referring to a disaster where the thing is making its way through the atmosphere and the container cracks open. I don't know. Yeah. There's no people involved. It's not going to be... It's supposed to send back the container, and, and the container's going to land somewhere in the desert of Utah, right? I, I mean, Yeah, it's... we kind of have done this already with a mission called Stardust, which returned material from a comet. It did crash the container. And we shouldn't did... be worried, because we're constantly getting, being rained with debris from space anyway. I mean... Oh, is that what they... Th oh! I don't know. Is that what, if that's oh, what they're like, getting at? Oh, like but... the Andromeda strain. <laughs> um, no, I think they probably have all that planetary oh, protection stuff. Oh, that could stuff. be what she means. Yeah, like, we're bringing back substances from outer space do you know is there a possibility that we could be bringing back something I'll harmful you, i'll tell you that planetary protection is a huge issue for those of us who want to explore places like enceladus because we do think that very likely there could be some if not adamant if not um <clears throat> Not you know if mind. not full organisms but uh, material for, that is biological and we want eventually to bring back a sample, and uh, we have to worry about how to protect the Earth from contamination. It's a big issue. It's it, like, as in money, too. It would cost a lot of money to mm -hmm. put all the safeguards in place. So it's being it's being uh, examined. Okay, cool. Uh, let's, uh, hey, m Could you use the space station as an intermediate uh you know, lab to look at what you got first. Or that'd be you've you've read on this. That'd right? be too you've read about though. this. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> he knows everything. This guy. <laughs> no, no. He, my God, he's up on everything. Yes, yeah, they, that's they're, exactly right, they're right? thinking about putting all the like the operating devices that would study it in orbit and just yeah. doing it all in orbit. But that yeah. and I even don't bringing know. back much larger samples too, like being able to grapple like a big giant something and bring it back and leave something. it at the yeah you know just we could be considering that yeah, yeah. They're, they're considering things like that from mars Ooh. Yeah. all right this is um mehran Hamza. You, you always pick the people with the really difficult you, names no i don't yeah well for americans they're not difficult for them I yeah bet. exactly it's difficult for me you know what um uh, i don't care what your name is it's difficult for me for some reason okay i'm terrible with names uh here's, this is what he says I, I i i detect a little like a little bit of an irksome quality in his question uh -huh. why does nasa focus on dead rocks like mars 
for life discovery. Oh, you've asked, Whoa. he's asked the wrong person. Oh, really? Well, because this is like one of those things that gets, I have a bee in my bonnet about this. Oh, I really? know, I think he's asked the right person. Is he right? Yeah, about. let's hear what well, you have to say. Well, you know, say. there was a time long ago when Mars was the place to go. It made so much sense to go and look there, but we've been there with mission after mission after mission. All the Mars people are going to hate me after this. Now thing. Enceladus is where it's at. The outer solar system is really where it's at right. because... You know, the, the, even the mantra at NASA is follow the water. Follow the water. Right. And much greater, because much greater propensity for life to exist in water. Much greater chance so for life as we know it. If you were to bet between Europa and Enceladus, where would you bet? Ha, <laughs> you know the answer to this. I do. I just want you to Yeah, say. of course, it's Enceladus. Nice. And not because, that's him. Not because, <laughs> not because... Enceladus has a greater chance of having life. It's because it's uh, ocean expressed as these phenomenal guys are shooting into space is so much more accessible. So we could do all the things we've all talked about doing, like what kind of instruments, what are the biosignatures we go after, you know, how do we, you know, back up one approach by having another. We could do all that on Enceladus now. Very all cool. Right, next. Very More cool. Uh, actually, we have an answer to the uh, the great attractor. Uh, I don't have time to read it, but oh, that's thank great. You, They're answering. They're oh, answering yeah. oh, our question. This is what's James great Brown? about this, and it is James Brown yeah. and <laughs> James Brown and Elvis getting in a hot tub. Yep. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that, that, I would no. I would see that. No, that's great, and actually, a lot of people are talking about the. So what is the what are they I saying? Oh man, he's giving. Oh crap, I lost it now. He gave me. He, he, okay, let me just say, the Great Attractor is a gravitational anomaly in the intergalactic space within the vicinity of the Hydra Centauri supercluster, Thank and he goes Spock. on more and more and more with that. Oh, is so, it dark matter? Is it a dark matter? Yeah. Thing? So oh, hey, no. um, well, Maslam, Maslam, matter. man. Thank you, brother. That was a great, uh, great little answer that you uh, helped us out yes, with. Yes, thank you. Um. Let's see. But an anomaly just means we don't know what it is. So. Well, but if it's a great, if it's a gravitational anomaly, it means things are being, uh, uh, the thing, the stuff around it is behaving as if there's a lot right. of mass there. There's right. all the galaxies in our neighborhood. It must be a big thing. It could be a lot of dark matter. It's maybe where like. But I mean, that's really all. Matter. We, the, the truth is, it all matters. we really observe is anomalies, right? For the most part, when 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 something acts as if it's being acted upon, that's the indication that something's going on. Yes. Right? Yeah, but yeah, an that's anomaly how you just that's, that like a, the planet nine is there. Or whatever. Right, exactly. Like we haven't never seen planet X or planet nine, right? We haven't yourself. seen it. We haven't found it yet. We haven't found it, but we know something's happening, and so we're gravitational to... wobbles. Right. The wo okay. So yes. cool. Good band name. All right. Here we go. I like obliquities. 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 It's kind of going to turn off a certain fan base, but we'll get. Is it smart, will? We'll get smart fans. It sounds like my jazz project. Mm, obliquities. Sean Lennon. Obliquities. Uh, someone says, "Hey, Sean, stop showing off." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when you've got pecs like this. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, Sean is uh, definitely one of the most science literate guests we have ever. I had. know he what amazing. I'm he taking is amazing. Uh, can I? Do I get brownie points for this? Thank do I get credit? Yes, you do get brownie points because Carolyn bought us. I brought Sean, him. So I brought him Carolyn here. Bought us Sean, so I am. I turned out points. to be a good talent and, scout. And by the way, you're going to get to see these guys uh, this Thursday at the Beacon Theater. Doors open at seven, and it is Star Talk Live. It is uh, uh, September 15th, Thursday, <clears throat> and you can still get tickets. And uh, you'll get more of this banter, and you'll also have Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, who I like to call the other black guy. Okay. <laughs> there are only two. There are only two. Uh, there are only two. <laughs> you know, funny, I, I, call, I refer to Neil and I as the tokens. The, well, yeah. Because he and I kind of came up the ranks. We ended up often to, on panels together, you know, uh, before he got really famous. Um, and it was clear that he was the token black guy and yeah, I was the, the token woman. woman. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. funny. Well, you know, things have changed. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and now you guys are things just... Things have changed if you've seen the pictures of him in his wrestling outfit. <laughs> yeah, yes, I have. When he was young. When he was young. So they have it looks changed. like he was they auditioning for the Mod Squad, right? <laughs> <laughs> he did look a little like Link from the Mod Squad. Yeah, the Mod Squad. Very cool. <laughs> hey, guess what? Facebook Live. Thanks for uh, joining us. I think we're going to do some more of this kind of stuff. You know, it seems as though from the um, reaction that I'm getting here on Facebook that people really dig it. So thanks Thanks a lot for all the support, guys. We really appreciate it. All right? Ciao. Ciao.